Let's me welcome on former K State star, now the newest member of Mizzou, Deshaun Gordon. How you, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. Pretty good. Well, kind of walk us through this now. We know you put your name in the transfer portal. You're on to the next and bigger and better things right now. And now you're heading out to Mizzou. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. You know, just working out, finishing up my school work, and just you know, ready to get to my next destination. Now, you were a player that I knew generated a lot of interest in you because we know how good you could have been the past couple of years. And obviously, you choose Mizzou. Like, why is the decision you chose? How was Coach Morgan able to win you over? Uh, you know, uh, the right opportunity, you know, was going to be a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. uh, play fast, tough coaching, and, you know, just a good place, good place to be. Great coach. Absolutely. Well, I kind of want to get fans to get to know you a little bit better. So, let's head back. You're obviously from Illinois originally, Chicago to be specific. What was, like, what was it like growing up out there? Uh, it was all right, you know, regular uh, childhood, you know, school, chill with your friends, play, you know, but then things, just, you know, it changed, got worse, you know, the violence got worse, but to me it was good. Now, you also chose the route of playing basketball, which isn't always the route everyone takes, but how were you able to choose that route? Like, why was basketball the thing that you really desired, put your effort into and really pursue basketball? Uh, my uncle, my uncle, didn't. he, he didn't let me uh, – do the things that I shouldn't be doing, you know, get away with none. You know, he introduced me to basketball, and I seen I, I, it was fun to me and something I fell in love with. At what point was it? Like, when did you first start playing basketball? Uh, I probably start playing, just playing around, like, fit, five years old. But then I didn't take it serious, so I got to about my sophomore year, high school. So kind of take us through your high school career because you walk away as a player that's a top 100 crew, a four-star guy that was able to be a part of Team USA before the mini camps. You able to achieve a ton of things and awards we'll touch up on, but kind of take us through an overall glimpse of your high school career a little bit. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't play a lot my freshman year. I played play on, on the sophomore team. I played uh, sophomore two years. Mm -hmm. Then, um, you know, my junior year, I came off the bench. Play, play was, a, was a big key to the team, and then – you know, my senior, you know, everything just went well. You know, we won, won a city championship. And then, you know, I headed to K-State. I mean, well, I headed to USA, then headed, headed to K-State. That's the crazy part about your story, because you being a guy that walks away as a player, has been a part of Team USA, that's done all these awards, and as successful as you, especially with your senior year, how were you able to start off like that? Like, for you being a guy that's a freshman and a sophomore, not playing and being the go-to guy that on the varsity team, how would you handle that? Uh. You know, I just looked at, I just added everything to fuel to the fight, you know. I wanted to be the best, so I just started working, working out more. Me and my uncle took my work back to a, a different level, you know, then my everything just changed when that's when we started doing that. When you were a freshman, do you think that you were better than a lot of guys in varsity, or were you just still kind of working the game a lot more and you need to improve? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say I was better than a lot of them, but I knew I could play at that level, but. Mm -hmm. You know, everything happened for a reason. It made me to what I am now. Now, if I would have asked you coming into your freshman year that you were going to be a part of Team USA, you're going to play Division One basketball at Kansas State University and eventually play at Mizzou, would you believe that? Yes, because I knew that I knew I had the, you know, the ability to do it. And I know I had the people around me to do it. Let's go through the transition. When you finally do get the call up, you know you're going to play varsity then as an upperclassman as a junior. How were you preparing that summer? Like, what were you doing to get ready for that season? Uh, you know, working out every day. You know, just doing two a days, like three a days. Sometimes, you know, just working out and you know, in the middle of the day and then at night for like every day. Me and my uncle was just working, just working and working and working. And that's how you know I prepared to play there. So, what point would you say kind of clicked for you? Like, when did you start saying, "Okay, I know I've always had the talent, I know I've had the potential, but now it's starting to come together, and now I feel like." I'm out there. I really feel like I am the best player on the court. I'm trying to step on the court. Uh, it was really once once I got to like, well, when I was at AAU, I like I knew I was good, but mm -hmm. it wasn't hitting me yet. But once I got to like USA, and I seen I know I could compete with the top guys in the country, even though I ain't make the team, mm -hmm. I just knew knew right there that and, you know I'm, I could play at that level, be one of the best. I want to go a little bit deeper into your team USA experience because, like you said, that is the situation where you're with the best of the best players for pretty much all the sophomores, juniors, seniors, and the top guys. When you first got that invite, though, I know that's one of the biggest achievements you could get as a high schooler. How did you learn about that, and what was your reaction? Uh, 
I was happy, but like my senior, I didn't know a lot about it. I didn't know it was that big, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I was I seen I was, was selected for it, and you know, Bruce, Coach Bruce Weber selected me to do that. Then I knew it was it was gonna be good, so I had to start working out more, trying to go to the weight room, things like that. So you get there the first day. What was the practice like? I know it's an all day event. You're constantly working out at those events, but take us through what a typical day a team would say look like. Uh. You know, the more I mean, when I first got there, you know how to go through just like processing your information to mm-hmm. get your uh, ID. You know, eat some food. We'll show you your room, eat some food, and then you know head to the gym. And then you know we do like workouts or whatever. Then we played a little bit. Then it's basically like the same thing every day, just like that, for about three days or for however long, about three days or whatever. Then they make the cuts or whatever. Was there a guy that when you first showed up that they didn't really know that well and you kind of walked through it pretty close with? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Jay Scrub mm-hmm. from the Clippers. I met, met him, you know, gained a good relationship with him. And when you go to a situation like that, you're going against the top guys from, like I said, about three classes out there. How did that push you in this? What's overall the intensity like in there? Like, what's the minds of some of the top guys in there? Uh, everybody in there know they was the best, you know. Everybody was competing and everybody was trying to show out. So it was just fun. Just going at it every day. Trying to see who the best is. So let's discuss your senior year then. You go out there and you average 18 points, eight rebounds, two steals, two assists per game. You become Chicago Sun Player of the Year. You get all the kind of awards you walk away with. But what was that senior year like? Uh, it was fun. Just knowing you're not losing. It was, you know, fun. Me and my teammates this probably had one of the best years. You know, just winning every day, and and we won the way we want we wanted to win. So it was just fun. Playing in Chicago, we know it's one of the better places you could possibly play the game of basketball at. What was it like growing up in that atmosphere? Is being really in a basketball community? Uh, it was good. You know, just energy, energy everywhere. Everybody, everybody competing from the fans to the coaches to the players. You know, the parents, the little sisters, everybody. So it was just fun, and everybody was tough. Everybody played hard. And, you know, it was just fun. So when you're going through this recruiting process, obviously you have a lot of offers on the table. We also choose Kansas State. How was Coach Weber originally able to win you over? Uh, he just came to one of my open gyms, you know, talked to talked to me and my uncle. And then I went on went on for a visit. And, you know, when I went on for the visit, I felt it was the best for me to go there. Remembering back, was there a school that you thought was number two? Like if K-State was not in the picture, would you have went to this other school? Uh. I probably would have went to uh, SMU. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they was uh, in my top two. So I probably would have went to SMU. So what's Coach Weber like? We see him on the court, obviously. He's always more of an intense type of coach, but you got to experience him more on the personal level too, both on and off of it for a couple of years. What's Coach Weber like? like? What's the whole picture of Coach Weber like? All the on and off the court situation. Like, what's this like as a person? Uh, he's a good person, you know, a loving guy, you know, help everybody, help the charity. Just a calm guy and just, you know, talk and get to know who you are. Really cool guy. You're heading there as a freshman. And we know there's a pretty solid team you guys could have had. You finished up 11-21, probably not what you guys wanted to accomplish that year. But how would you overall think that year went for you personally? Uh, I think I played okay. Like, just, you know, average. Not average uh, freshman year. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was good. Got to learn a lot of things, you know. Won some big games, you know, so we lost a lot. So, but it was something that I learned helped me gain relationship with people I will remember forever. So, there's one aspect you again I really want to touch up on because we all know you are capable of scoring. I think Coach Martin is going to give you an opportunity to score a lot more this year. But one thing you always do bring is rebounding. As a guard, that's not always a typical thing, but you're always averaging at five rebounds per game no matter where you're at. How have you really learned to become such a good dominant rebounder? Uh, just uh, I wanted to – it's all about just reading. I mean, timing it, you know. I want to tip dunk a lot. So, mm-hmm. when you tip learn, just always jumping for the – try to get a tip dunk, you will eventually learn how, where the ball going to go once it hit the rim. There were a few games that you kind of displayed. What's the potential future for you in your freshman campaign? One game was against West Virginia. You scored 15 points, which was your original career high. Walk us to that game a little bit. No, early morning, we had a shoot around. You know, we prepare for them. We go to shoot around. Uh, me and me and a couple of the, of the freshmen, we come late. I didn't start. I was supposed to start that game. Didn't start, you know, just reflect on why I was late or whatever. Then 
just coming to the game and just was at the first shot. It was just on. Um, everybody was clicking. When you look at your overall performance, do you think you could have played better? Like, if there was an opportunity, do you think you were using the correct way in terms of offensively? Do you think you could have produced a lot more if given a bigger opportunity? Oh, yeah, I could I could have did better. You know, I could rebound more, you know, took other drives, shot the ball a little bit more, guard more, everything. It was a lot of things I could have did way better. And when you are in a locker room, obviously, isn't winning as many games as you guys probably wanted to. How do you guys keep the team confidence up? That can be hard on the locker room, not winning games. Obviously, your main goal is to win games. How do you guys still stay close with each other? And how do you just kind of keep the chemistry high? Uh, we know that we all love the game. We all still try. Nobody just gave up and became selfish. So we all knew that it was just something that was just going through. And we eventually get out of it. So and everybody loved the game. So mm-hmm. it was something that helped us, that helped us keep together, keep together. There's another game that I need you to walk us through, and obviously that is the game against KU, and we know the whole brawl that happened after it. Walk us through how that was happening, because you weren't really too involved in terms of after the whole shot block happened, but just what was your reaction? Just walk us through how you personally experienced that all. Uh, I'm from Chicago, so I just played to the end of the buzzer. I just stole the ball, you know, stole it. As I was going to lay up, one of the walkers ran past, so I had to do it like a Euro step or something. And then they came and blocked it and just stood over me. And then my teammates just came. And it just started from now. And you were originally on the ground, so you weren't really a part of the whole brawl that happened and were injured and then in the corner yeah. over there. But when you were sitting, like, what was going through your mind? Uh, well, I, I was always I reacting off of anger because of me, but I didn't get a chance to do anything. You know, Xavier Sneed grabbed me, mm-hmm. helped me, and then Coach Weber came. So they helped me not make a bad decision, uh, you know, tarnish my career, anything, so. I want you to talk a little bit more about Xavier because he's a guy that obviously is a great leader. He's been an accomplished player mm-hmm. at Kansas State and overall to his college career. What impact did he have on your life? Um, he helped me a lot, you know, with defense, you know, and he helped me just help being a – he was a good leader, somebody, like, in a competitor, a hard worker, so he just helped me help with all my game too. A lot of aspects. Following that year, then the COVID pandemic sets in, and we know you guys are going to be locked in for, you don't know at the time how many months, but it ends up being a long time, obviously. But what was your mentality? Obviously, you want to get better. You want to work on something. Like, What did you really key in on and work on for your sophomore year? Uh, My body. Just, just trying to get my body stronger so I can be able to take hits and get to the basket and, you know, guard people. So that was that was the main, main focus for last year. And be able to make shots and, you know, continue to get my handles better. But, you know, things went however it did. But, yeah. And you knew heading into this year that it was going to be a young team. Obviously, you had a ton of freshmen walking in. A lot of the seniors were gone now. You really only had Mike that was the only senior on the last year's team. How did you emerge as a leader on the team? Uh, I just tried to lead, um, lead by example, just to show them the right way of how to do things, you know go hard and, you know, do things well. That was my main way, you know. I let Mike do do the talking, like, to, you know, talking to people and helping them with things. I just tried to lead by example and show by example because at the end of the day, I'm still a sophomore too, so mm-hmm. just try to lead that way. Now, personally for me, I think we saw at the end of the year, you guys were a lot more talented than the record shows. We know that with the pandemic, getting the freshmen and even yourself to developing was challenging, kind of getting the whole chemistry situated. We saw more towards the end of the year, you guys started winning a lot of games. We were very competitive in a lot of big games too. If you guys didn't have the pandemic, if you could have had a typical preseason, typical training camp, all that stuff would have been normal. Do you think this would have been a lot better? Yeah, of course. It was just, it was a lot of things we couldn't do because of COVID. You know, we couldn't scrimmage a lot because of COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, we couldn't be around each other a lot because of COVID. So, if we if it wasn't COVID, it'd probably been a whole different ball game. You know. Now, in terms of the future for K State, there's a few good freshmen I want you to touch up on. One was Nigel. Obviously, he emerged as a starting point guard for you guys. How special is he, and what can K State fans expect from him going forward? Uh, me a good player. You know, tough, got heart. You know, he can shoot the ball well. He's one of the best shooters I've ever seen, personally, at this point in my life. You know, he's a great shooter, you know, big-time shooter. He can handle the ball, and he can get to the rim a little bit, too. He gonna try, he'll try, he'll try to guard whoever. So, you know, he's going to get a great kid, hard worker. 
just kid, I want to be the best and put one in first. The first day that you kind of came into practice for you guys, the very first game, scrimmaging, practicing, were you shocked at how good he was? Nah, because I, I got a chance to see him on his visit. You know, I knew, knew Nigel, got a chance to uh, meet him on his visit and host him. So I already knew how good he was. Now, out of all the K-State players I've ever interviewed, there's been a lot of guys that always say you're kind of the guy that I'm talking to. You're kind of like the main recruiter for them. How have you kind of accepted that role? Like, how have you become that guy that everyone talks to, kind of the personable guy in the locker room? Um, I just tried, um, just tried to listen, you know, understand everybody out and listen to those things, you know, and just be a good person. Just try to connect with them. The other guy is Davion. He's become a great center, too. I think he's a special player down low. How special is he? Uh, he he's a pro too, you know. He big, big, big body, you know, strong. He just want to get better. He just want to get better and put his team first. So that's gonna help him get where he got to get to go want to go to. Now you were able to experience the entire year of no pandemic issues. You were able to go experience a whole freshman season that was pretty much normal. How much of a difference was the sophomore year, and how did you adjust to that? Uh, it was a whole other environment, you know. Everything, nothing felt the same. It wasn't, you couldn't do what you want to do, go go to the gym when you want to, be around the people you wanted to be around. So mm-hmm. it was a lot, a lot different. Not just like just uncomfortable, but you know, we had to do what we had to do to play and get what we wanted to go to. Everyone shares some funny stories about their COVID experiences. Is there a story you can remember from this past year that's kind of a funny story from COVID environment? Uh, just being around people with COVID and not catching it. You know, just being close to people with COVID, and somehow you wasn't the one that had got it either. It's mm-hmm. crazy days like that. How about the test in the morning? I know that wasn't something that everyone wanted to do, but having to wake up every morning and go get the test, what was that like, and how did you adjust to that? Uh, at first it was hard because it was, you know, we was getting the long, the hardest one, but then they came out, you know, with different type of COVID testing. And, you know, it was just something we had to accept. It was something like you had to do, or you wasn't going to play. So. This past year, you also became a lot more efficient score, a lot more consistent score. You had 13 games of 10 plus. I think you could add a lot more too if there was a bigger opportunity. But overall, you still show that you can be an elite score at the next level. Discuss how you became more consistent this year, though. Uh, I got look, you know, I got more freedom than what I had my freshman year. So, mm-hmm. you know, just playing, playing within the offense, and just trying, knowing I can score, find small ways to get buckets, and you know, score when I score, just. Things that more just have a little bit more freedom than I have my freshman year. Another part about you that now is that you are a high academic person. After your freshman year, you were honorable mention. You made the honor roll. Discuss how you really prioritize your academics. Uh, it's something that you know, just growing up, you know, parents keep keep you on it. You know, want me to have good grades, come play with you, have bad grades, and you know, and that's something I try to compete in sometimes. You know, with my teammates, mm-hmm. it's who can have the best grades. So. Just some, just now don't want to have a bad grade out the group. A lot of guys don't always have the highest of grades in college basketball, but especially to have a 4.0 for yourself, especially coming off your freshman year, that's not easy. So how do you balance that? How do you balance becoming such an elite basketball player while also balancing your academics at the same time? Uh, just taking sacrifices, you know. You just got to take sacrifices. If you want to get somewhere, you got to do it. So it's like I have no choice. So I might as well not try to BS it and do bad on my work. Mm-hmm. Might as well just do good while I'm up because I got to do it anyways. You look back now, your first two years and your overall came to state career. What would we say are some of your biggest memories? Like, if you could list like three of your favorite games, what would those three games be? Uh, of course, the West Virginia game, mm-hmm. uh, Pittsburgh game we played, and uh, I take that back. I was Oklahoma State game. I, no, the Alabama game I played mm-hmm. versus Alabama. Uh, versus KU or West Virginia. Overall, that final game was really impressive, too. Like I said, you guys really started clicking more towards the end of the year. And you guys really were neck and neck with Baylor. They obviously had a little run at the end and make a nine-point win or something like that. You guys were competing with them pretty much the entire game, closer than most of the entire conference was able to do all year. How are you guys able to turn up and really compete with Baylor that good? Uh, we you know we really found out that we, we, could, we could be good, you know. Only thing is we just didn't make shots or whatever, so – it's just we knew that we could be good, and we just kept working, you know, and just competing. Know that they still human, too, at the end of the day. 
You then put your name in the transfer portal and you choose Mizzou, but what other teams were in the portal? Like, were there other schools that were heavily interested in you? And if so, who was maybe number two, number three option for you? Um, that I, I wasn't at the point I was just, you know, um, just hearing schools out. So at the point I didn't, I really didn't have no top school I really wanted to go to. I was just hearing all the schools out and just waiting for a second, just to relax or whatever. But Mizzou caught my eye and I felt like Mizzou was the best option for me. And that's why, that's why I picked. So what really led you to put your name in the portal? Was it just overall bigger opportunity or what really was the reason you wanted to go to the portal? I just felt like my, um, you know, my talents would be better somewhere else. I thought it helped me help my future somewhere else. That's all, you know, nothing wrong with the coaches or anything. Just some, that's what I thought me and my family discussed about that. So, The head coach you're going to be coached by next year is honestly one of my favorite coaches out there. I think he's an incredible coach. Obviously, he's done special things in the zoo so far. But how special is Coach Moore? Like, what's your discussion been like with him? And what's he like both on and off the court, personal-wise, just like as a coach? You know, uh, good guy. You know, he, uh, you know, caring guy. Talk to him every day. Just call and check up on me, see how I'm doing. Ask about the family, you know. And we talk, have good talks about basketball, too. So, you know, it just seemed like a, a good guy and just want, want to see me better and want to help. This is going to be a whole new look Tigers team. We know they've had a lot of guys move on so far, transfer-wise, a couple guys have graduated. But what's the overall team going to look like? like what's your role going to be? What does he expect from you in your first year there? Um, You know, the same guy that I've been be, I've been, you know, the guy that I've been coming out of high school, the guy I've been in college, you know, that's what he expect. Just, you know, more scoring opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, more, you know, more, um, a lot of, just a lot of different, more things, you know, but the same me, the same guy I've been. Is there one word you could use? If you could, if you could pick one word that you'd say could describe yourself from a zoo fans, what's that one word that they can kind of expect from you? Uh, a competitor. You know, I'm a competitor. I want to be the best. I want to, you know, guard the best. I want to do the best. So I'm just a competitor. We touched up on this a little bit in the beginning, but coming from Chicago or pretty much anywhere you come from, but especially coming from a place like Chicago, you always carry that identity. You kind of carry that pride of being from there. How do you kind of look at that? Like when you go, when you play in basketball and out of state for high school, now you look at in college, how do you kind of carry that pride of being from Chicago? Uh, just knowing that Chicago is a great place, you know. I know Chicago a great place. I know it helped me be the person that I am today. You know, it was just loving my city, loving what what they what it done for me. So I gotta carry it and let people know that's where I'm from. So you've been the Big Twelve your first two years, the next three years possibly for the most part. You can go build play a part of the SEC now. How excited will you be a part of that conference? Uh, you know, that's a, it's a great conference, you know, a lot of pros, you know, a lot of winning. So it's just a great conference to play in, fun, you know, athletic conference to play in. Is there anyone on the teammate that you've got to talk to yet or build a relationship with? Uh, no, not really, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, they all, you know, just I just committed. So, mm-hmm. but we're going to have a, a great, all have great relationships. Now you have a couple more months of finishing up school at K-State to head out there. What do you want to improve on and work on before you get on campus? Uh. Just working on my everything, my complete game, you know, just getting better at everything, getting better at spot shooting, handles, you know, guarding, rebounding, uh, shooting off the dribble, everything, Lead, leading, everything. Well, a few more things before I let you go. One which is discussing your legacy, and that's something that all guys want to build for themselves. So when you are done playing at Missouri now, what do you want a legacy to be for you to achieve both on and off the court? Uh. Guy, just I want to be a guy, you know, great guy that a legend, you know, great guy that was good to people off the court and, you know, was pretty good on the, on the court. So just one of those guys. Absolutely, man. Well, final thing for you, give Mizzou fans the three biggest goals you have set for your Mizzou career. Uh, uh, win newcomer of the, of the year, you know, defensive player of the year, and just win the SEC. Absolutely, man. Well, congratulations on the commitment once again, and I look forward to seeing what I got next for you, man. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem, man. God bless. You too.